All right. So in the last one, we had the uh, setup blocking for our character. But of course, if we try to move while blocking, we get this, which is not ideal. And also, uh, we don't have control over the uh, movement speed of the character. So let's work on that. All right. So what you do? I'm gonna go to my uh, anim uh, blueprint and go to my block. Let's do a uh, blend. Uh, what's it called? Blend layer by. Um, what is it called? Blend per bones, I think. Yeah, must be it. And I'm gonna connect this here and find my locomotion. Locomotion. And use that here. So what I'm trying to do is to split the animation uh, in half. So to make it so that half of the body, like the, the lower body, is gonna be playing the locomotion animation, so our leg movement, and the top of the body is gonna be playing the uh, blocking animation. That's basically what I'm trying to do here. And let's connect this here. I'm gonna select this node and go to our layer setup. I'm going to use the. So you need to uh, tell it from what bones do you want to split your character, right? So if we go to uh, the player character here. If I open this mesh, let's find the... I'm gonna use the spine bones. The spine... Yeah, see. So this is where the spine zero and bone is, which is pretty much in the middle of the character. And that's the bone that I'm gonna be using to split our animation. So you'll have the uh, locomotion playing on this half of the body and the blocking playing on this half of the body. So yeah, spinal one is the bone that we are gonna be using. Let's go for spine zero one and uh, depth is like uh, the adjacent bone that you want to influence kind of thing. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it's like uh, instead of only affecting the spine one bone, it's gonna also affect the bones around it, and you can choose how many bones. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. That's yeah. How many bones around it you want to affect? I guess. Anyway, I found I found that uh, a depth of four looks pretty good too. And I think we need to check mesh space rotation blend too. All right, and I believe that should be it. Let's try that. Hey, okay, look at that! Now we can move. And block. Nice. Yeah. And if you move, perfect. Um. Actually, I want the same setup for my uh, enemy character, so I'm just gonna copy all of this and go to my. Enemy character, open its anim blueprint. You see anim graph. Let's delete that and paste this one. Move that up here and connect this. So now it has the same same block logic. Cool. Alright, that's that. Oh, and also uh, should make sure that it has the blocking tag registered. So if we go here, we can register the blocking tag. I have two of them. Oh, interesting. Can I delete that one? Uh, I need to go to the manager. Yeah. In 
delete this one. Delete. Alright, so blocking. Cool. Mm -hmm. That is taken care of. Uh, and let's work on the uh, movement speed next, I guess. Yeah. So, what I'm gonna do is make a new C class uh, and call it. Uh, what is it? I need the mod uh, magnitude calculation. Right. Let's call it. Movement speed. Put that in my attribute set folder. All right, let's go to the uh, attribute set first. I want to add a new attribute here, so let's do a new property. Actually, let me just copy all of this. Uh, I can just copy that. we have our movement speed set up. All right. This, yeah, I'm gonna do this in pre-attribute change. So let's do uh, if gimply ability actor info. Actor info. Get actor info. I need access to the character. So I can modify the movements, its movement speed, right? So this is how we're gonna get access to the character. Now we check if the attribute that's being modified is the uh, get movement speed attribute. Then we can do a new character movement component. We need to include, include it. Bim. Make sure you have it included. Uh, this one. All right. So now we can do. Uh, let's call it character movement. So movement. Yeah, that's fine. And we need to cast new character movement component. Uh, act, uh, info. Here we go. Now we can use the character movement component to get the max walk speed and change it to new value. There we go. And that will set it to whatever the uh, we've set our attribute to. Nice. I think that's it from for here. Yeah, that should be it. You can close that. Now here in uh, movement speed, we need uh, public. Uh, let's make a constructor. Do we need a constructor? Let's make one. Constructor. We need to override. Uh, we've done this before. Uh, so calculated. No, no, no. And I need to capture gameplay tab, gameplay effect attribute definition. I need to capture movement speed depth. Right. Cool. And oh, I did not. 
implement these. All right, so now we can do. I think I need the include first to include the uh, attribute set. What we're doing here is something that we've done before. For example, if I go to myself, yeah, we, we, we captured the uh, vitality here, right? We're basically doing the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this. Go to my movement speed one and paste that here. But of course, here we are capturing movement speed, right? So let's replace all of these. Alright, and we want to make sure we are getting it from the source, which is our character, because we are trying to modify the movement speed of our character, right? So source, not target. And uh, all of this stuff, also, I'm just gonna copy all that. Let's remove this, we don't need that. Copy that. Uh, cool, that should be it. And then. Let's create a float, call it movement, uh, movement speed. Which is gonna be a zero, set up zero, then get captured. Uh, this one, I think. Movement speed definition, pass in the spec, evaluation parameters, and movement speed. Now we can set our movement speed. So you can do any complex calculation that you want here, but I'm just gonna set my movement speed to 600 by default. But you can do whatever you want here. And then just return movement speed. All right, that's all I wanna do. Yeah, I don't see the point in complicating this for no reason. Yeah, that should be it. And let's compile. All right, now as it's done compiling, I'm gonna go to my Gimpleffix, find my attribute. I have a secondary attribute here. And I'm gonna add a new one. And that new one is going to be our movement speed. I'm gonna use an override. And it's going to use a custom calculation, which is going to be my movement speed. Perfect. That is set up. And next, I want to go to my. Uh, I guess we can do it from the blocking. Yeah. I'm going to go to blocking and do. Add a modifier. We are going to modify our movement speed and I'm going to, well you could, you could do whatever you want here but you could divide your movement speed by 2 or whatever you want so I could do this, just divide by 2. Oops. So now, if I, let's see, I see, yeah, movement speed is 600 currently, now if I try to block. Uh, yep, you can see it says movement speed is now 300 divided by 2. So, yep, it's working. Perfect. If I release, I get to walk past and then do. Or you could also set it to. Wait, is it? Or you could just. I think I'm just gonna hard code a value for it. Uh, I'm just gonna use a float. Oh. So, just override. I'm gonna use an override so every time I block my movement speed is gonna be set to 300. Now I can run and then I block. Yep. Perfect. This looks so nice. Alright, uh, next is. Well, we do need to make sure that our blocking and pairing is working, right? 
Uh, I guess we'll do that in the next tutorial. Yeah, let's work on that in the next one. Because it's, it's pretty big. Uh, okay, so see you in the next one.